Welcome to the key to all of this with Tim and Dylan. I'm Dylan, and that's Tim. What's up? Unfortunately, buddy? I think you said that last time. <laughs> One of the last so, times. Yeah. It's consistent. It's consistent. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> how's it going, Dylan? Uh, it's going great. It's uh, another great day for Star Wars. How's it? How's it going with you? In that beautiful. Great. Show? Uh, I'm eager to delve into today's topic: uh, Attack of the Clones, which you know, despite what is this episode 47. Uh, uh, we have not delved 40, into yeah 46 or 47, 46, 47? Yeah, yeah one of the two um yeah i can't believe we're heading into our 50s um yeah i know uh yeah i, I think that uh uh attack of clones gets um sometimes some pushback from fans but i think it's actually one of the best uh kind of most cohesive star wars movies that uh has one of the best mystery plot lines too of Sifo Diaz and mm -hmm. uh Kamina. Um yeah. I just think it's it really soars to great heights to an epic finale that uh we've never really seen in a Star Wars film a, a land battle of that size and to finally get the clone wars behind you know you fought with my dad in the clone wars yeah. um yeah yeah, I love it. It's yeah, one of the first times that we get something from the original trilogy um, brought to film. I guess I mean it would make sense because they were the next things made. But yeah, it's it's cool to actually have that first true tie-in outside of hey, this is Anakin, he's a little boy, and this is Obi Wan, you met him. But the actual like, oh, we're getting the Clone Wars now, which was a huge thing for Star Wars fans back in, you know, 77 when it first came out. And they were like, the Clone Wars, wow. That's going to be awesome. Yeah, what That's going to be is. a long TV series. Yeah, I know. Longer than the actual war of the Clone Wars. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things that it's I like the Battle of Shrewd loved. Wars. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 yes, all the clones are kind of like dandies. They're dandies. Um, yeah. <laughs> in artists mm -hmm. um one of my favorite parts is how they set up two really cool things from the original original trilogy in certain moments uh involving um a young boba fett and mm -hmm. uh boba fett sees obi-wan kenobi outside of geonosis um hiding and mm -hmm. then kind of internalizes that in his approach to capturing Han in Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. And then at the same time, he doesn't learn a key feature um, with his uh, uh, father's demise, Jango Fett, when his, um, you know, uh, his suit malfunctions in the same way, very similar way to the end of Return of the Jedi or yeah. the beginning of Return of the Jedi. Yeah, for sure. Uh, shout out to Angel Zaragoza. Uh, he just popped on. Good to see you, buddy. It's been a oh. while. Um, yeah, it's it is uh, great that it, you know they do the foreshadowing of you know the malfunctioning armor. Um, obviously, Boba Fett survives, and we get him a lot more. But one of the things with Jango Fett that I really I think is probably the best part of Attack of the Clones is the seismic charge sound. Mm -hmm. It's like the best, the best noise. And it's just a high tension wire hit with a hammer and then kind of manipulated. That's like, I don't know why, but that sound is just like what I think of with Attack of the Clones, that and Battle of Geonosis and a lot of other things. But that sound, sound design in Star Wars is so good. And that's uh, a great way for them to show you know, that it's still a very unique thing that they're creating by just that, that sound, just like, we don't know what Definitely. that sound is going to be. We don't know what a Wookiee sounds like, but yeah, just that seismic sound. Mm, beautiful. And can um, we talk about the bugs? I got to talk about the bugs. I love oh, how okay. this, like, you know, a lot of star Wars plays on, you know, I don't know, this kind of uh, primal fear of like snakes like, you know, um, you know, when Luke is kind of going through this dark side cave in Empire Strikes Back, there's mm -hmm. a snake, uh, you know, the, the trash compactor. Yep. Um, the, this is Anabi. all about bugs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, this is all about bugs. Like almost a lot of the new aliens 
um, that are featured, Geonosians, the um, creatures in the arena, mm -hmm. everything kind of plays on this bug thing. And I just, um, I kind of, it, it used to be jarring to me and now it stands out as a way of like, this is something new that mm -hmm. uh, it just kind of incorporates in um, as like almost like a theme. I don't know if it's intentional or not, but it is like kind of like a motif. Do you think that George Lucas has a fear of bugs and creatures, and that's why they're so prominent in his films? Yeah. I, like think he, I think he Tarantino has a fear of feet, so he just slaps yeah. feet in every frame. He's so afraid of feet; he must be <laughs> terrified. He's also terrified of of curse words, um, mm -hmm. yeah, of other movie references. Um, yeah. yeah, I I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Lucas was also afraid of snakes in yeah. the same way that. Uh, that um, Indiana Jones is, but mm -hmm. yeah, That's why I, I, I think about love. <laughs> so true. That's why, I, that's why I only write about having a great ego. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Self esteem. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I also, I wanted to add that this, this was my favorite star Wars movie for a very long time in 2004. I was working at a video store and we had everything on VHS. You know, we had Ewok adventures. We had, um, you know, Caravan of Courage, uh, you know, the original trilogy one and two. And I basically just had Star Wars Episode two VHS playing over and over and over. And I would work like 10 hour shifts and people would come in and just be like, oh, this is still on. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, you know, it's a very, very long movie. And uh, yeah, people would always be like, so what's the new movie that's out? Uh, you know, oh, is... Um, uh, Finding Neverland, uh, it was a Johnny Depp movie back in 2004. Is it any yeah. good? I'm yeah. like, Attack of the Clones is really good. If you, uh, <laughs> yeah, if you, your heart style. hate Neverland or, or love Neverland, you'll, you'll love Attack of the Clones. It's so good. Um, yeah, I just wanted to add that because I, I probably wore that, that VHS completely out to the point where they had to just mm -hmm. toss it. Yeah, you truly, deeply love that. Uh, VHS. Madly do. <laughs> um, yeah, I just think that getting the chance to see Yoda finally um, perform some, um, you know, lightsaber gymnastics around mm -hmm. uh, a CGI Christopher Lee, yeah. who's just so good. And, um, you know, the connecting points that... Um, uh, Tales of the Jedi ads um, are just so so great to see. Mm -hmm. you know, like deleting Camino from the records, uh, it's just it's just it makes it it really um, makes Attack of the Clones look great and planned yeah. um, in a way that uh, yeah, it's it's just a good time to be a Star Wars fan. Yeah, it's interesting with the the shift of the practical effects from episode one to full CGI episode three, because it is the first time we get a fully CGI render of Yoda through the entire movie. Because originally mm -hmm. episode one, he was a puppet, mm -hmm. and then they did him CGI. Um, but also, we we talked about this in a Stormtrooper or Troopers episode that we did sometime last year, maybe the year before. I don't know. You'll find it wherever you get your podcasts or watch.tktaot.com. But we talked about the fact that um, every single clone trooper was complete CGI, not a single practical thing about them. And that's just crazy. That's just a nuts. Yeah. Um, and it stands up, the visual effects stand up. One of my favorite uh, details, though, is the bar scene is uh, the only non-CGI uh, set in the whole entire movie. And that's why Hayden Christensen apparently loved yeah. filming that scene because it was the only practical, <laughs> practical set. But, uh, and it what a great, you know, uh, in kind of keeping with the cantina, but great. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I forget what video game it was, but there was a, a video game, Star Wars based thing. It was like, uh, I forget, but Attack they, you go, go, yeah, yeah, go through Coruscant and there's a bar yeah. in Coruscant. I'm like, oh, I, I really want to like see this at some point as a Star Wars fan. And then you get that in a really great way. Yeah, it's awesome. You have to find out what game that is because I, uh, yeah, Je I have like everything. 
Jedi Knight 2, maybe? That's it. Yeah. Jedi Knight 2. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm actually playing through Jedi Knight 1. Once I'm done with that, I'll I'll be excited to see that. Yeah, let um, me know. Let me know what you think. I always love the practical effects side of things. I, I think it's incredible what they do with CGI, but if you try to compare anything CGI with something Phil Tippett does, you're going to look like a fool because he's just so good with his stop motion and his creatures and everything. Um, but yeah, I, and that's that's like a fun scene to have practical effects as well because... Moss Eisley Cantina is such a big deal in the original Star Wars. So you have to have, you know, this new one with, uh, was it Evan Slees Begano or something like that? Yeah. <laughs> hey, you want some death sticks? Like this, yeah. <laughs> you will really reach you my life. life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Eh, you don't want any. <laughs> yeah, Glad it's a great movie. Yeah, yeah it's I think so it's an incredible sequel to. Uh, a full sand planet going to a full like busy city where it's not just dunes and nothing for for miles uh, i was reading that in the scene where they're chasing zam wessel there's actually like 200 or like 2000 digital vehicles that had to be added to the scene because there's oh so God. much chaos yeah and it's just, it, it blows my mind. I couldn't imagine them having to do it the original Star Wars way with actually filming all of the little ships in a blue, you know, blue screen and then cut it all yeah, out. Not individually, uh, yeah. But I would love to see someone redo it that way. Oh, definitely. Um, yeah, no, it, it really does. I mean, hats off to, to, to the visual effects team. They really made it feel like a city. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and starting off in a good, like, film noir kind. Yeah, that's uh, that's yeah. It's it's it, visually it's an incredible movie. I know a lot of people poo on it because of Hayden Christensen, and obviously they don't now because everyone wants him back. But yeah, I just I love that movie. I think it's each act is just such a beautiful new bit of the story, and we're not stuck in one place, which Star Wars doesn't typically do, but. Um, yeah, to see, you know, Anakin getting revenge on the Tusken Raiders and the Battle of Geonosis and Naboo, which I, we got in the first one, but it's just there's so many sets and there's so many locations and so many creatures and so much going on that it's just such a, an incredibly beautiful and busy film. Mm -hmm. And then you're also still just having incredible storylines and everyone kind of gets their own uh, shining moment too. You've got Yoda and Dooku. You've got uh, Dooku capturing Obi Wan. You've got uh, Mace Windu killing Django. You've got Obi Wan versus Django Fett. You've got the whole droid factory scene. It's it's hard to really compete with this this movie. And I know it's difficult for anyone to say something bad about it because it's. And to set up the clones too, the idea of the clones mm -hmm. is so this this really mysterious um, thing, but also that it kind of makes you know you end up being like, okay, this kind of makes sense. Um, mm -hmm. And um, they really maximized you know the, these couple words that are spoken in one of the tr trilogy films, uh, first trilogy films, and uh, they really you know really create this world behind it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I love it. It's and while you have all this stuff going on, you've got Anakin losing his hand, which is the foreshadowing of him becoming machine, becoming Vader, yeah. who was more machine than man. Um, we finally get the true beginning of Anakin and Padme beyond "Are you an angel?" Um, which is the first key to Anakin's uh, fall to the dark side, because. Mm -hmm. I mean, we all know he wants to learn how to save her. And we talk about it in last week's episode, uh, Darth Plagueis, uh, basically what pushed him over the edge. And then, like you were saying with the clone troopers, I mean, we get to see all of them, but we see as uh, fans of the of the movie that we know that these are going to be bad guys at some point, but we don't know what's going to happen. So it's the first time that we actually see Palpatine's manipulation over the government in his favor where it's like it doesn't matter which way the war is going to go 
he's no, always oh, he'll he's win won. no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's 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 truly great. And uh and to see like the clones and then think of like how like much like even like the Bad Batch, you know, them, Rex, like mm-hmm. all these clones have become they're literally genetic copies of each other and yet they become these unique different characters over the years. Um yeah. it's, it's just it's just great. Uh great beginnings for even greater characters yeah and then we don't need to dive into this but the battle of geonosis is one of the best things we did an episode on this uh, a couple months ago and it's one of my favorite episodes yeah so go back and check it out but that's all i've got for attack of the clones yeah me too um i have some news that i kind of want to bring up uh that we have kind of the first view of the skeleton crew um and it's coming in the form of uh toys <laughs> oh yeah and, uh which i think is really interesting um there is uh it seems to be there's like a bunch of human characters but there's also one ortolan character um which is the alien species that uh max rebo max was rebo yeah yeah so I, I'm, I'm i'm intrigued to see what you know i only know uh, this type of alien as like are like all aliens jazz musicians of this species so I'm interested to see if like he has like a recorder or like some sort of lute that he yeah. just like has to compulsively play because of his species uh, predilection for uh, playing music um, mm-hmm. so yeah I, I'm just really excited yeah that's gonna be great I, I hope that it sticks to kind of this more adult theme of Star Wars that we're getting like we had with Andor and Obi-Wan because if you lean to Stranger Things, you're going to kind of divide the audience again. It still needs mm-hmm. to feel like Star Wars overall and not just because they have a blue elephant, you know, Jedi character. I don't know if he's a Jedi, but a blue, you know, elephant character. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm very much looking forward to that. Uh, hopefully we get a release date on that soon. I know. Yeah. Um, I have somewhat of a news thing that's not necessarily news, but... I saw an extra feature of the Acolyte when I went to see Star Wars Episode One on May 7th. Uh, What's up, Madeline? 0707, howdy, howdy. Um, It's So they showed basically Carrie Ann Moss fighting with the lead baddie, and it showed how she fights as a Jedi. And... It was awesome. I don't know if this has released anywhere else because it was. I think I've seen sneak peek. It, maybe it, it, it. I saw a trailer when it was. She uses the force a lot, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, like it's over using a weapon almost. Yeah, they use a lot of parkour, mm-hmm. a lot of running and jumping. Uh, but this like fight scene they showed like five minutes of it, and it was awesome. Really, see. and I didn't. I, I didn't know. see it posted not- anywhere else because it was supposed to be exclusive for people going to the theaters to see this um so yeah i'm i'm excited about that that's kind of my kind of my news to share um that we're gonna get some cool fighting scenes with carrie ann moss very like very matrix yes i saw her uh, appearance at the upfronts for disney um and she looked like her outfit looked like a cross literally between trinity and a jedi <laughs> yeah we'll have yeah. to look it up but it is literally in the center of that venn diagram mm-hmm. um which is great yeah I'm, i can't wait for that to come out um yeah. june 4th, it, right yeah that's bib for juna yeah. hashtag bib for juna that's what bib tim for juna. came up with yeah. mm-hmm. very proud of him for that um Thank you. the rare yeah, so, wins of that. <laughs> so join us uh next time we are going to talk about jawas and Tuscan Raiders. I want to. I want to get into great topic. The main main inhabitants of uh, Tatooine because I don't think they're touched on enough. Um, obviously, no Book of Boba Fett, but yeah, it was. that sounds great, Dylan. Um, yes, uh, may the force be with you, and also with you, Tim. Oh, Thank thanks. You. You're welcome. <laughs>